What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and today I have a really fun video for you. Uh, this is kind of a part two of my must grow seed varieties. I'll link the first one at the end of this video or right here if you want to check that one out first. But I basically did edible things in the first video and, and while some of these flowers are edible, I'm going to focus on flowers for this one. Just like in the last video, these are all things that I have successfully grown at least once or twice and I was just really impressed by, I thought were kind of unique or something that you guys might be interested in. I'm going to try to cut in as many photos from my actual garden as I can and of course we have the seed packets here. Some of them I don't have the actual packets anymore because I used them all up last year and I need to order some more so wish me luck getting them. So let's get right into it. I thought I would start off with calendula. This is a very handy helpful medicinal little flower. This will attract pests away from your vegetables like a magnet. It's beautiful unless you want to harvest these in which case they're going to be covered in bugs <laughs> at least in my garden but you can rinse them right off and then you can dry out your calendula and use it in oils and all kinds of stuff. I mean it's just lovely. So if you want to go the medicinal route this is the variety that I recommend and like last video I'm going to apologize for my gardener's manicure. And then for the beauty, just for the most beautiful calendula, I also recommend another fruition seeds variety. This is the Remembrance Mix. We don't know if these are exclusive to, um, I know the Resina is not, the Resina. Um, I don't know if this is exclusive to fruition or not, but that's where I got it from. So these are about 60 days to maturity and once you plant calendula, uh, you basically never need to plant it again. It just keeps reseeding and resowing itself. So I'm interested to see what happens this spring and how much calendula I'm going to have on my hands. <laughs> so next up, I chose this variety. I hope that I can find a picture of these, but I picked this because every time I posted a photo of these daisies on Instagram, everyone was asking me, oh my gosh, what is that? So I, I, agree they are really cool so i picked these i got these seeds from zella jake farm and garden .com. they also sell through etsy and i've said before they're in florida and they're very affordable um not flashy packaging at all but um they are very affordable and they put a lot of seeds in their packets very quick shippers so especially if you're down in florida i definitely recommend checking them out had really good germination with their seeds too, which is the important part, right? Next up, this is my favorite Celosia that I grew last year. This really tricked me. I thought for sure that I had completely failed with these flowers. I, I think I didn't pinch them in time or something, but for a very long time throughout the spring and early summer, they were about this big and they just had a tiny little plume of flower on the end of it. And I was like, well, what am I supposed to do with that? And um, you know what, it warmed up a little bit. And the next thing I knew, I had these big plants with these big, beautiful, pink, spiky flowers that you can just put into your arrangements and they make them look so, so very cool. So this is um, the Siskiyou, I believe is how you say it. It's a, it's a place. <laughs> I think you guys told me last time. Siskiyou. Siskiyou? <laughs> Uh, at this point, you can just drink every time I say something wrong. So this is the Flamingo Feather variety of Celosia. And I have like four other varieties of Celosia. I'm going to try really hard to grow this year. I found them to be a little fussy getting started. I also overwhelmed myself last year, so I can't really tell what was the plant and what was me. <laughs> Probably me. Next up, I have a fresh packet. Thankfully, I bought two of these last year because I did not get a singular florette seed packet this spring before they sold out. Uh, this is the Valkyrie Yellow China Aster. I hope that I have photos, and if not, um, hopefully they will not mind if I show you theirs. But this beautiful, beautiful. And this is another plant that I didn't think was gonna grow just because it, throughout the spring it was very stunted. I think it's just worth starting them a little bit later than I did last year and not wasting time putting them through the shock of the cooler months. So but once they got going, oh, and I also need to say that um, the salmon, the I think it's the Valkyrie salmon, 
I'll try to put it here. Um, that was oof, very beautiful. I don't have any more of those. This is another one I need to get another packet of because I absolutely loved these. These were so dreamy. I hope they come back this year. This is the Nature Antique Shades Pansy. I got this from Florette, but I know that they are available elsewhere. And that goes for a lot of the varieties on Florette's website. She is very selective of really cool varieties. Um, and they're all in sort of that, uh, that very popular bridal neutrals, boho uh, colorways. But you can actually search and find a lot of the stuff that she posts elsewhere, often um, for a little bit less money. Not all of them. She does have some very unique stuff, but I have found that quite a few of them I can get elsewhere if you happen to miss the sales. And I know that she put out a list of her um, favorite seed vendors for you to check and see if you can get things on other sites as well. So that's very cool. I'm definitely going to get some pansies going later on today because I'm starting to like worry that I haven't gotten them going yet, even though every year I get them going a little too early. But just the smell of my greenhouse when it is full of violas is Speaking of viola, the honeybee viola is extremely cute. It is exactly what you'd think it would be, and hopefully I'll have a photo. It's just this yellow and black little viola, and it is the cutest stinking thing, and they actually have a very strong scent to them. It's just really, really nice. It's just in the springtime when you're so desperate for a, just a breath of flower, floral warm air. They are the best thing in the world to have in the greenhouse. Another flower that I will never be without because of how delicious and wonderful they smell is alyssum. And I have a couple different varieties here. This is the royal carpet and I have a couple of carpet of snow packets. These are available pretty much everywhere. You shouldn't have any trouble getting your hands on alyssum. And I have bought some other varieties that were, you know, really pretty blushy shades, but they didn't quite grow and spread the way that these do. And these reseed and come back next year. So these have actually made a really nice ground cover and the bees love them. And they come up very early. So it's a nice early pollinator food. Love alyssum. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So if you didn't already know, you can actually, instead of going to a nursery every year to buy coleus for your outdoor garden or even your indoor garden, you know how we roll here. I highly recommend going and checking out like pine tree gardens, seeds, especially. I also have the wizard coleus here from Fedco. I think they were sold out of this last I looked, but you can check. Um, but the wizard coleus is a very cool looking coleus. And then I have here the black dragon and the mighty mosaic. Um, I got asked about these a lot last year. So definitely look into some coleus seeds. They're really easy to grow. They're very satisfying because they germinate very quickly and they're just the cutest little plants. And then by the time that midsummer comes around, if you plant them in a good spot in your yard, they are they, they flush out, they fill out areas of the understory, especially underneath some of my shrubs and trees outside. I absolutely love them. So I highly recommend getting them from seed. You'll save a lot of money. You'll have a ton of plants and you can even keep some in the house. Last year I started growing feverfew and here is a normal variety, a traditional expected, uh, common, common, there you go, common variety of feverfew here from Fruition Seeds. And these were really pretty on the edge of my garden bed. So I, I really enjoyed growing these and I didn't get a chance to harvest a lot. So I'm gonna be doing that this year, but these take about 75 days to maturity. I got them going somewhat early spring last year. Um, they're medicinal, they look beautiful in bouquets. They grow back very quickly after you've cut. Another flower I absolutely love to grow are snapdragons. And a couple of these I could not get to bush out, you know, quite like the pink and purple, more common varieties. But I think that that's a me problem on not, me not pinching them enough, uh, basically. But once they got going, these are gorgeous. Oh my God, so beautiful. So these are both from Florette, but again, you can get these um, from other seed vendors for sure. This is the Madame Butterfly Bronze and the Costa Apricot. 
And I absolutely love Snapdragons because they really are very hardy in cool weather and they do pretty well over the summer if I keep them in a shady area. So I have a few spots in my garden where the spring they're very warm and then as the sun moves in the summer they end up in the shade and they just do great there. So I'm hoping to have real bouquet amounts of Snapdragons this year um, and I think it's gonna be the year. I can feel it. Okay, this was one of the stars of my garden last year. I would be completely remiss to not mention that. Is that the way that you use remiss? What a weird word. Anyway, I would feel very regretful if I did not include the amazing gray Shirley Poppy. I got my seeds from Uprising Seeds, another favorite seed company of mine, and these grew like crazy. I mean, they were just, they, they bushed out. There was a bazillion flowers. They flowered forever, long after all the other poppies in my garden had given up. And they, they had like a whole second flush of flowers. So I'm very excited to grow these again. They're like this dusty slate lilac. They are absolutely beautiful. I know I have tons of footage of them, so I'll be able to show you. Um, so highly recommend this variety. I had a really easy time of getting them to germinate and transplant. I mean, they're just zero problems. 10 out of 10. Love that variety. I pulled out a couple of cool sunflower varieties. I am just sort of wading into sunflowers and I just love every single one of them. Last year I had probably 15 different varieties growing in the garden. Who knows what's gonna pop up this year. Um, I love how they hybridize in your garden just without your intervention at all. I had a whole bunch of mystery sunflowers come up this year that were, I could tell were combinations of the ones I had planted the year before. So, uh, but these were really especially beautiful, especially in bouquets. So I have the Ruby Eclipse Sunflower, and this is a 55 day hybrid. I got mine from Fedco Seeds. And the other one is the Strawberry Blonde Sunflower. And these were just really gorgeous. These also came from Pine Tree Garden Seeds. Pine Tree has really good, um, their superseeds.com is their URL. But their seeds are very unique, a lot like Florette. They have really cool colorways and just stuff that is very desirable right now. I think we're all sort of having a similar color moment. Of course, not all of us. So I picked up this variety of bachelor's button because this thing, it just prolifically reseeds itself. And it is just a really cool, almost black bachelor's button. It looks very cool in different kinds of bouquets. And I find it to be just a really good filler flower in general. And it's so prolific that you will have it most of the season if you plant it. And then some seasons after that. I got mine from Fedco Seeds, but I know that I've seen these around. This is the Black Gem variety. So these seeds are actually a couple years old, so we're going to see how they do this year. They should be fine. Something that was new to me last year that I am very interested in planting a lot more of this year is Buplurum. I believe I'm saying that right. So this is a great filler. It's like a green flower. It has just these very interesting um almost they almost feel like a eucalyptus type leaf and the stem structure is very interesting and it's just a lot of fun to play with in arrangements so i'm pretty excited to grow this again this year it's an 80 to 90 day maturity flower so this is something i'm going to get started probably next month so this is the buplorum rotundifolium <laughs> variety of it. So this again is a florette variety, but you should be able to find these elsewhere. And I also saved some seeds from that this year. So I'm going to see if I can get those to germinate as well. And uh, if so, I will have some extras to pass around to friends, which is great. After having a lot of trouble with the Zinderella peach zinnia variety, I could just never get them to grow. They were always just like a maybe 10 flower plant before it would poop out on me. So I was very surprised when the Zinderella Lilac that I got from Uprising Seeds ended up being absolutely amazing. It grew to be this enormous, just beautiful cut flower bush. I mean, I could just walk up to it every day and pull an entire bouquet off of this plant and it would just put more out. It was 
awesome. It was a powerhouse in the garden. So I am absolutely going to always try to plant this variety. The color is really beautiful and it gives a similar vibe to the Zinderella peach, but I found it to be more versatile anyway. It went really good with all the celosia that I grew. It's just like a lavender pink with like a darker circle. Really, really gorgeous. I could go on forever about zinnias. I have a love affair with the Queen Lime Blush and all of the Queen Lime series zinnias are all beautiful. I don't have packets on me for those right now, but I grew them last year and the year before that and they were absolutely gorgeous. They are always big healthy plants for most of the summer. So definitely give those a try if you've never grown them before. And then this one was another really cool surprise for me. This is an interesting it almost gives me like marigold fall colors, but you have it all summer long, so it can make really interesting bouquets that are just a little bit different than all the blushy colors that I tend to have in my garden. So this is the Persian Carpet Zinnia, and it very much lives up to its name in that it just will carpet. It's about a knee-high plant and it will just spread and it really takes a good beating and will put itself back together again because we had quite a few hurricane-like winds and all kinds of problems in the area that I planted it. Wasn't a lot of wind break for them and they would just grow straight back up again. They lasted the entire season. So this is something I will definitely keep planting because of the unique colors, the nice warm autumn-y colors. So yeah, give this one a shot. These ones came from Fruition Seeds as well. So I do not have a packet for my favorite nasturtium from last year, but that was the Alaskan Salmon. I believe that it's the Tip Top Alaskan Salmon, I think it's called. Beautiful salmon colored nasturtium. And if you've never eaten a nasturtium before, it's like a peppery, almost like an arugula flavored flower. You can eat the leaves and the flowers. They look beautiful in salads. They're really tasty and they grow like crazy. They'll just spread and cascade wherever you put them. They're great for containers. They're great for borders. They're gonna attract your aphids off of your other edible crops. So love nasturtiums. I plant all varieties of them all summer long and they're just wonderful plants to have in general. But definitely check out the Alaskan salmon variety because every time I posted a picture last year, everybody was like, what is that? That is so pretty. I think I'm gonna close it out with a sweet pea variety. I could have picked every single sweet pea variety that I have seeds for, but I decided to just pick one because this plant was the most disease-free, the most prolific bloomer, and the most striking plant in my garden. And this was the Windsor sweet pea. This one came from Florette, but I believe you can find this variety elsewhere. Um, or similar varieties. There are quite a few that are very dark purple. This one is like almost black, beautiful sweet pea. It's not a really strong smelling sweet pea. For that you would want, a lot of sweet peas will be labeled if they have a very strong scent. But this thing in bouquets, oh. You put this in with like some purpley cinnamon basil and some of those black gem bachelor buttons and then pop some like big pink salmon. Oh my God, I cannot wait. Okay, so there you go. There is my little picks from last year's garden or the year before or both that I think that you should give a try. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you are having a great time planning and dreaming of your garden. If you are down south and you are already getting started, I'm very, very jealous. So let me know what your favorite flower varieties down below are. If you have some that you think I should grow, absolutely tell me, I would love to know. And I will see you guys very soon for another video. Thanks for watching. So luminous and vibrant